Ladies and gentlemen, today our guest is Roy Lana. You might uh, have, have seen him on the news a little while back when this little turnout with these terrorists uh, attacked London Bridge and, and spilled out into uh, Borough Market. Now, usually, Roy, I've got a little quote. Yeah. Right for these things, but I can't find one that's powerful and powerful enough for what's happened to you, sort of thing, you know. So, so I f- I think the only quote is 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 that your story is the reason why people like us, people who come from where we come from, yeah. should really think and- twice when they're voting for these people that are in the, these top posh boys and all that that are in the establishment, yeah. right? Because they're all right. Nicking your vote and telling you telling you what to do, but when 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 the, when the push comes to shove, Roy, yep, don't really give a fuck for us, do they? No, none of them, none, none of, them. of them. And 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 to tell yeah. you the truth, reading your book and reading what happened, Roy, I'm fucking livid, yeah. mate. I'm livid. Yeah. Even I'm to this day, at... like, yeah, even to this day, I've been trying to contact with a bit of help. They're just not interested in anything. I'm livid, Roy. I'm absolutely yeah. livid. But we'll come, we'll come to that, mate. Yeah. So definitely. first off, Roy, for the people that ain't read your book, The Lion of London Bridge, I mean, where can you get this book? Is it on Amazon? Oh, yeah. Have you got one now? Yeah, it's the book. Um, right, just hold it still a bit so it focuses in. Right, here's your book. Where can you get it, Roy? You can buy that from Amazon. Yeah. It's only through Amazon at the moment. Um, whether we're trying to get it through to the book, big book um, shops, it just takes a matter of time. That's all we need to know, Roy. Yeah. Now, Roy, for the people who uh, who ain't read your book or anything, yeah. Uh, what, what, tell us about how Roy L- Lana started. You know, around the Peckham, around the flats, around the buildings. Yeah, I mean, I was, Peckham and I was, all that. What was, was your thing? <laughs> I, I mean, what was your life? Them. What was your life life like, Roy? Let, let, let's wait for each other to stop speaking, sort of thing, because we start jumping over each other's words. Yeah. It, it, it gets a little bit right. What 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 what, what was life in Peckham like for young Roy? Um, I'm, I'm born, I'm born in 1969. Um, I was moved to the Lebri Estate when I was a few months old, which is just off the old Kent Road. Um. And when my mum has just moved, she's lived there 50 years, she's just moved on there. Um, but growing up on the estate, I mean, you can't, we had our best memories there, probably best times ever. 100%. I mean, up to when I started work at 15, 16, um, the old Kent Road, we had everyone come to the old Kent Road from all over the place. Um, it was a like community thing. It was hard. Sometimes you, yeah. you got to look after yourself as well and everything else. I mean, yeah. even um, going to the football, Millwall was right on our doorstep. You can always support the big clubs. But the thing the... is as well, Roy, apart because, you know, we come from the same plot anyway. Yeah. I was brought up in Bermondsey all my life, and it's the same thing, like what you're saying, playing out in the flats all day, coming out. How was yeah. mum and dad towards you and all that, Roy? Just normal sort of... There was I mean, I was, I was... Yeah, I was quite a little kid, at, to be honest, yeah. I mean, I was in and out of hospital... Up to the age of about 12, 13, yeah. about three or four months a year with the asthma. Gotcha. I had very bad asthma. Um, it still didn't stop me going out. It's just that I'll, I'll just keep getting more attacks every time. So my mum was always rushing me to hospital, she had the nebulizer, <laughs> as she did. Um, my dad was inside quite a bit. Yeah. Um, on and off. What was he? What was he at? What was it? What was he? Uh, d- 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 one of the, one of the, you know, but yeah, he was doing that. He was doing like credit card fraud in probably the 80s. Yeah, and uh, when you say that though, Roy, yeah. I mean, it comes across that sort of us sort of people, yeah, you know, especially when it comes to sort of crim- criminal activities and all that, there is reasons, you know, when people think you go, you, you go out and and do these things because you want to have a glorious life and you want to do that. But it was really to feed us all, wasn't it, our dad? It was the thing to, to, do, to, do. Yeah. to do years ago, which um, um, obviously to get money. I mean, there weren't much money around until about the 80s, was there? Um, 
Well, this is the thing that done me with your book, really, uh, right? And I mean, we will come to it, come to it as we bump on with the uh, the interview. It seems that if you if you ask someone to actually define crime, you know, it seems to be perfectly acceptable in one world, yeah, and not acceptable in another world. You know, like the people that that work in the city and the people that fuck each other over for all this money yeah. and this and that. That's crime. But it seems to be in business, in legitimate business deals, crime is perfectly acceptable and sometimes commended by these yeah. people. I mean, it's like now, um, where's, all the, where's all the money going to building all these stuff that we've been paid into for years? Um, food work, everything. Um, our national insurance. I mean, should have the top quality hospitals and schools and. Well, it don't even come to that, really, mate. I mean, at the end of the day, Roy, we all know where the dough's going, don't we? Because you yeah. you face these people. Yeah. You know, you face these people that have to make decisions about working class people, and it doesn't matter. Look, I'm 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 jumping ahead of myself here. So what I'm just trying to say is trying to set up this little so it was a bit of football, game of run outs, Tin Tan Tommy. Just... Yeah, yeah, yo, water fights in this weather, especially in this weather. Water especially fight, in 76, but... um 76 was the ice um I remember them ones, them days like this, like this every day, wasn't it? I remember I had a caravan down in Dinchurch, not far away from where you had your caravan when you yeah, were... it was when you bought right. one, we had a uh, we had one in uh, Dimchurch on a on a place called New Beach Holiday Centre. Yeah, I know that well. 1976 was just like a corker, wasn't it? Absolute yeah. corker, mate. Unbelievable. We're living the, on the climate, east. The climate must have been changing since then, boy. You know, <laughs> 1976. Yeah. Because I ain't never experienced this country otter than that time. We we made the. Um... Like living on a council estate, we didn't know any other, but we made it as we did and as best as we could. Um, and we had some good laughs there. Always playing football every night, maybe sometimes before school. Um, cleaning the snow away to make the goalposts. No sun lotion. No, 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 no. no just red wall blisters all over the camp. Or climbing over the, um, the, <laughs> the dumps where... Um, the old houses were being pulled down. We used to like climb through them, climb through the old houses. No health and safety then, and <laughs> right. nothing closed off. Sweet, Roy. Now, when you, I mean, obviously, if you're like me, you didn't do no exams and get from. Geez, no, I didn't. Um, I never either. I'm... I was lucky. Cause I knew someone on an agency, and they asked me when I was fifteen to just that some holidays before I was meant to be leaving, if I wanted to do a bit of temporary work. Um, and luckily, I've done a post room job in a company called Cable and Wireless um, okay, over in Fairbanks Road. Yeah. yeah. So I went there for two or three weeks during the summer holidays, and they invited me back. They said the bloke was leaving in that November when I was 16. And I ended up working there for 22 years. Oh, I know, man. Yeah, it was turned into Mercury Communications, which probably people know about now. Um, so I had a job straight away from school. Um, it was only in the post room for about a year or so, but then I went down to the print room. Nice. And then I learned all the aspects of printing. Yeah. Um, and then obviously over the last um, 15, 20, 20 years, they outsour started outsourcing things and companies started getting everything outsourced them days, which spoiled it. And printing game is is the um, technology. Yeah, I know, I know yeah. a lot of people that was in that game. It ruined them. Yeah. I remember, I remember... I can't really say the, too much about the, the term because <laughs> I had someone on the back of my moped once and and, and, the, and it, it, it was banging trouble, this guy. He's absolutely banging trouble with the other people and all that. And yeah. we was on the back of the moped driving and we turned down the borough and fucking... <laughs> all, all we done was run into lines of old Bill each side of the thing. I didn't have no insurance or anything. He's just escaped from wherever he's, he's got to go from and everything. And, that, and that's what I remember mostly about the print thing. Of all... It was quite handy in some of that aspects because years ago I used to do all the complimentary tickets for me all. We used to buy one or get one. And it was just like raffle tickets. Yeah. So we, we used to print them, or about 20 or 30 of them, so we'd get <laughs> in the football. Yeah. Um, 
We better, sure too, we better not get too much into all this, yeah. mate, or people won't, or you won't, definitely ain't going to have a shower. Yeah, there was just like some, something, there's different colours each game or something, and we yeah. used to get one, and we used to do like just about 20 of them, 30 of them, just to like for a few people. Um, so where did you get from Peckham to Bermondsey? I mean, the, the majority of your like owls, your pals, they're, they're all out of Bermondsey anyway, aren't they? So what was that? Yeah. They're all right. I've lived, um, I've lived everywhere. I mean, I've lived, well, I mean, Peckham was my main thing to about 16, 17. Um, then flats come up. Um, I've lived in Waterloo, down the cart. I've lived gotcha. Jamaica Road, where the Tesco's is, there. I used to live next door to Michael Barrymore's mum. Oh, did you? Dad yeah, was on Margaret. The road, didn't I? Yeah. Um, I forgot the name of the block now. Where the Tesco's is, on the Jamaica Road. Yeah. I lived there for about a year or two. When, um, then I used to live on Lucy Way. So I've lived everywhere. Yeah. All different places. So you get to know each other. Played football for many pubs. Yeah. Apples and Pears, the Sultan, yeah. and so on. Uh, the Red Lion Boys Club. Um, so I've been about from an early age and we've done now, other things. Now, did you ever have a feeling inside your way? I mean, like with me, growing up, when I was around Bermondsey and all that, and I, about 4, 15, 16, I started getting involved with a... Well, not getting involved in it, but started thinking to myself, you know, I fancy doing this acting game. But I felt inside myself that the future, that something was going to happen. I just had this little, I don't yeah. know what it was. Now, did you ever get that feeling, Roy, that, that I don't know, that something major was going to happen in your life at some point? Do you know what I mean? Um I mean, I was just kept going. I mean, I always loved football. I was always, like, loved football, playing football as much as possible. I would love to have gone on to, like, coaching football, especially before the, the, the World Cup in um, America, 94. So I must have been just in my 20s then. I would love to have gone and maybe done something then. Always wanted to. But I think the age of 15, we started going to our local pub, which was next to the Drovers, um, called the Rumbles. Um, Simmer, um, and then we started going to Elkhead Road when we were 16. Yeah, which didn't start Don't getting the drinking, like. green man, yeah. all that. Um, and I was happy just doing the work. We had a good job, big company, a good social life, which um, it was good. And then the football Saturdays, okay, it was about meeting up with people you know, yeah. not bad football because Mill's never been that way. Yeah, um, I mean, it's more depressing watching them than. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember I used to go in about nine. The wall, to tell you the truth, when I used to go in Mere Wall, yeah, I remember like 68, 69, when uh, people are probably gonna, gonna, uh, I'm probably sort of got mixed up with the players where it was like Eamon Dunphy, Barry Kitchener, yeah. Derek Posse, Brian King, Keith yeah. Weller, all and, and they were. Eamon Dunphy. You know, a good, good little team they were in them day, sort of thing. And to tell you the truth, I stopped going there. Well, when it when it all started kicking off all the time, you know, because I'm talking about yeah. tiny. I camp, mean, um, you know, and all that little mob started coming. Yeah, in. I mean, it's just the way the social life in them times, I suppose, happened, didn't it? From the eighties, well, that me was the seventies, wasn't it? Yeah. It started seventies. It started yeah. at like seventy four, seventy five, yeah. when that when West Ham and all that stuff with Lee Pratt and all that happened, and you know, yeah. and that's when I stopped going, boy, because it yeah. started getting a bit violent for me yeah. then, really. And yeah. but that's when everybody else started going. Yeah, yeah, at different people, different areas, different. I mean, it's not actually. I met, I met some good people at Millwall over the years, all different aspects of life, which um. It's good. But that sort of violence and that sort of thing, Roy, was our was our way of life, wasn't it? It was like not not promoting it in any way, but yeah. I remember, you know, you, you used to go me a war on a Saturday and 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 whatever happens happens there, but it was like releasing something, wasn't it? It was like a tribal working class sort of release of something, you know. I think it was there, but also, if you remember, like, we had the old kit road on our doorstep. I mean, we, we used to sit when we was young on the wall there, when we was about four, 13, 14, and the Kentucky there, 
the end, Kenny's drovers. I mean, we're sitting there just like we're young, we couldn't go out there. Yeah. We had the fights we used to see outside that Kentucky and the drovers. Yeah. It was like a football match. <laughs> yeah. So. Now- now, the reason I want to do this, Roy, because, yeah. you know, we're set, I want to set up this sort of environmental thing at a time. Now, if you want to mind, Roy, and it's probably a little bit painful now, uh, can you can you take us through the events of that day? I always knew the people from the market because I used to walk my little girl's dog. So like, I got to know a lot yeah. of people in yeah. different areas. Um, on that actual day, I mean, well, I mean, saying that, well, two weeks before that, I mean, Millwall was at Wembley for the playoff. Yeah. Um, it was good to earn. I mean, I walked through there that night, um, coming back home, um, probably a little bit wobbly um, because we had a good day out. Um, and then, like, on that night was the uh, news that the Manchester bomb went off. Yeah. Was um, it that night? Was it? Yeah. It was that night when Mill went to oh, Wembley. Was it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was the one when... And then... Um, and it's always in your mind something then happens, especially after a few months before that was the Westminster one. Um, I mean, it's, it was happening at the time. Yeah, um, you never think it'll happen to yourself no, or anywhere near. It's the same if you go on a plane. You if you hear a plane crash, um, it, which is very rare. So you like very rare. Plane the next week, even though yeah. one crashes. So yeah, like that like service attack is very rare. Um, but on that night, it was like it was the hottest day of the year, which is probably like. Um, it was the Derby Day, um, which I love a bit, but I'll only have a bit if I can afford to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't care. I've got a couple of pound. I still do a couple of pound each yeah, way. Yeah. Um, I'm not one of these ones that go and stick 10, 20 quids on. Yeah. Horses. I've done that in the past when I was working yeah. young, when I was a young age. Yeah. Um, so it was a nice day. Okay, my life weren't that brilliant at the time, um, but I had a room, which was nice. I could somewhere I could like, just go and relax a little bit. I mean, mate, phone me up, asked me if I had to see him watching the Champions League that night because he was coming down to the Bowen Market and knew I was down that way. And I said, yes, um, I'll do that. And um, lucky I had a little win on a on that day on the, on the derby. Nothing like major, but... Yeah, 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 yeah. It was... Well, it was, it was Andy. Um, yeah. So we went out, met me, mate. Um, I was about 7, 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock. I think it started at 8 o'clock. And... Um, the public wedding was the Wheat Sheaf, which is on Suffolk Street. Yeah. And I mean, it was packed. All their ways are like football, they're big games. They're always, yeah. especially around the Borough Market now. Yeah. Um, you probably like, remember it a lot longer than me. Yeah. That you'd be lucky. If was a, you'd be lucky if there was a takeaway around it years yeah. ago. Yeah. Um, I mean, the pub's always been there. And um, we went in there. And to be honest, you, I've, half time I went home and got some. I had to go get some more money quick. Yeah. Um, so I went home quick. I've gone back to the pub. My mates have left. It was too, it was too, it was too hot. It was too right. hot in there. So, you've gone, so, Roy, you've gone from the boozer. Yeah. And you've gone to a, another gaff. Is that right? Yeah, because we was in, in the, the boozer with the manager, with the manager from the market porter. Yeah, market he, porter, yeah. Yeah, we knew the management from there. And um, he came with us and they, it was too hot. They had to go back to the, um, pub because something um was there you had to go and check on them so we went back and um they got no tellies in there so we went back in there and made had a booze that's where i went back to the pub i was originally from and walked around and had a drink and because we was with the management the manager all night all night it was closing time coming up to about 10 yeah. o'clock yeah so he said he's gonna let them finish up and then he has to do his, his work after so we went over to the black and blue um, because obviously he's, he likes being out of the way when he's got yeah. his break and whatever. So we went over there. I said, all right, I'll come over there for a couple more before I go home. Um, so we're talking about quarter to 10. I think we just had one or two. I've had my first pint there or bottle. Um, and with the black and blue, it's on an angle where you've got a restaurant and you've got a big wall in front of it where you can't see what's going on yeah. on the other side. Now, not knowing that they've already planned into people on the bridge. What, the terrorists um, have already yeah, added, yeah, done, done 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 work. Um, the football must have just been finished because all we see is people running everywhere. Now, we must have thought, it's I mean, we weren't, we, weren't even, we weren't even thinking about anything. We just, yeah. it's a normal one. And if people going down for their trains after the football, yeah, people run, run away, run to whatever. 
Yeah. Um, it's only when the, the restaurant started jumping up, people started panicking in the restaurant, you could hear all noises. Yeah. Which was like, like, um, even then, you still don't know what's going on. They're, they're looking at people panicking in there. And before we we started looking at because we, even the football games, big football games, there's never any uh, trouble at London Bridge at all. Yeah. Even Apart like, from years ago with me. Yeah, yeah go back years ago. But like, even from there, I think like if there was a big game, the police have always got it under control. Yeah. And, which is good. Um, but it, as we as we started looking around, start, people started panicking in the uh, restaurant. Um, where we were sitting on a bench, which I've turned around, and then you see f- like three. Everyone's running every, everywhere. Then three blokes coming up to the um, up the ramp to the door. But one of the uh, staff tried to shut the door quick and put a lock on it. These are the these are the terrorists. Yeah, so the terrorists were walking up to the ramp. Yeah. Um, okay, I didn't see their suicide belts at the time. Um, my mate tapped me on the shoulder, told me to run. Um, oh fucking hell! How was you feeling? Uh, I mean, in the book, it's it's like, I mean, I know I know you did what you did and all that, but I yeah. mean, you don't really want to be in that position to do that anyway, do you? You no. sort of think, fuck me, I've got to get out of here. Yeah. Because at first, while I was facing away from them, it's only when like mates said, "Come on!" I'm turning around, look at them. They were they were on the door then, kicking in. So they're kicking the door, and I thought. I mean, like I did, I didn't think the terrorists had, but then I thought, well, you yeah, had done nothing wrong. We've done nothing, nothing wrong. It's only when they kicked well, in. So, so the, did you put two and two together by then? Nah. No. So quick, so no. So all you know, there's, there's three buds kick, trying to kick the door the in. Door as far yeah. as you know, they, they could be football fans, they could be anyone. It could be anyone after someone, yeah. So, gotcha. It's only when then, then they did make the, then they did strike getting and they pulled the knives out. Gotcha. Um, and then from there, um, I was... Right, let's, take this. let's just take this nice and slow now, Roy. So they're banging the door. They break in. All the people are panicking or, or are they just like... There's uh, panic everywhere. Panic. There's panic. You can hear the panicking. You can hear all, all the um, plates going everywhere in the restaurant. Um, there weren't many. There was only about seven, eight people or maybe ten people in the, in the front bar. yeah. Um, so they was they was running anyway. But why running. were they running? What at what point did they know they had to run, boy? Um, whether they seen anything, like whether they seen they the tools out. Yeah, I'm not the I'm not the uh, sharpest yeah. with my eyes. So yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, as they come in, they've got under because they put a dent into the um, door. Under so the door, yeah. Under it. Um, as they climb three under. I've stood up, they've, they've stabbed me twice, once in the chest, once in the stomach. Well, just come, so you're sitting yeah. there. Yeah. You're sitting there. They're coming under the door. Yeah. So obviously you're having a nut about trying to yeah. see. So before, yeah. before you know anything, one of them's plunged you, yeah? Yeah, one of them plunged us. This starts talking about Islam and Allah and... Oh, really? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. It's only, and then, like, so it's one of them had only Arsenal top on, which... Um, I still, didn't think it's a, just for that anyway. I still didn't think I still didn't think it was a terror attack. You yeah. know what I mean? It's something in my head that didn't Yeah, think. yeah, yeah. But it's um when the knives went in, and I'm fighting for my life. I'm st- and in, that, that phrase fuck you on my wall. I mean, I only knew about that about a year ago or so when I see the yeah. CCTV with the audio. It's come automatically. Yeah, I didn't know whether I did say it, but then it it was confirmed about a year or so yeah. ago, or about a year and a half ago when I watched the CCTV for the first time. So um, that that made, like when you when you're in them situations, sometimes you don't really think and you don't really no. compute anything, do you? You, you just no. uh, you know you start screaming and shouting and all. So he's plunged, yeah. He's plunged me. One's he's gone. Him. Yeah, one's gone through, ready to attack whoever else or whatever was in their mind. Yeah, yeah. Um, the the third one has been helping the first one and who's attacking me. Yeah, so I'm getting smashed everywhere and. I mean, me was hanging off. Oh. They've, stuck, oh, they've stuck the knife in my arm and like pulled oh. it. Then, but I'm, all I'm feeling is the one yeah. on my chest. Yeah, it's, it's flushing or something. Yeah, but I wasn't even thinking that at the time. Yeah, um, I'm just fighting for my life. Yeah. Um, 
but I've, I've been doing quite well because it's brought the other one back over. Like I've seen the third one, instead of going in there injuring the other people, um, that the three of them. Oh, yeah, yeah. Me. I mean, we're talking about seconds, 10 seconds with the three of them, maybe overall about 30, half a minute. Yeah. Um, and you've I've been... got out of there, but it's give people that half a minute, everyone to get out. Nice. There was two people left that was hiding in the... Um, didn't anyone the think they were well, you know, right? Anyone, no, this, this is where... Actually go, look, he's got you know, over the, the years, I've heard so many people saying there was this, there was that. There's one um, a Chinese bloke said there was telling everyone to get down on the floor. Right? They, it was talking to them. You, they weren't talking to anyone. They were just ready to stamp and kill people. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he was being allowed as a hero, as a Kung Fu expert... And apparently now I know that he was hiding in the back, probably watching. A guide, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I ain't going to knock anyone one of them nights. No, you've just... got to knock people, mate, because, I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, mate, you know, oh, well, I don't know how you think about it or anything, but I'd be fucking angry myself, mate, if there was a pub full of people and you're standing there with three geezers with knives doing you and everyone's yeah. hiding under tables and hiding in kitchens and all that. I mean, fuck yeah. me, mate. Yeah, I mean, it's only when, I mean, this year for the anniversary, I went over to Paris to meet one of the survivors. Gotcha. But, but um, you're I'll, the survivor. The others ain't the survivors. You're the survivor. Yeah. But, oh, <laughs> not, yeah, but uh, it was a story they picked they picked up, and it was a girl that wrote something in the book, thanks to you, I'm still alive. Yeah. So he, one of the papers picked, kind of contacted her, and we went to meet her in Paris. I thought she was a staff member, yeah. but she was. She was sitting right in front of us um, in the restaurant. She had yeah. full, full, full view of it. And it was nice to go over there and to actually see someone else's point of view that I've never known before. Yeah. The dinner just come, and then all of a sudden, she see what was happening. She goes, and she said, she, if it weren't for me being, who, doing that oh, today. You're alive. Yeah. She, as she said, thanks to you, we're still alive, which uh, meant a lot more. Yeah. 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 But as I, as I said, and and then, so what's happened, Roy? They're jerks. You've got three of them on you now. They're stabbing yeah. you at the pieces. They're slashing me, yeah. in your head, in your ear, in your shoulder, in your belly, in the... What, eight times you had eight, eight, eight wounds? Neck, the slashes on my arm. I mean, even down to... I must have been... When I run out, I must have... Um, eventually, when I run, I run behind a wall to get out the, out the door. Yeah, where I must have I've cracked my ribs where oh. I've cracked into something, I think. Okay. Unless it was one of them. I think it was when I've yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. I just had to get away. I was pouring the blood. Yeah. Um if I'd have slipped over or I've been dead. By that time, or everyone's everyone's out of the Everyone, <clears throat> everyone's gone set the couple that got caught on the way where it was hiding in the corner. Right. They come out and they I think one of them got stabbed in the um by the Adams up in the folk there. Yeah. Um, nothing Dead? major. Huh? Dead? No, no, no. He's just got no. one stab wound. Um, they got one stab wound each. Um, it was nothing. Like, they survived it anyway. Which, yeah. Apart from the dead, I've come off the worst one. Um, I'm walking down the... Are you, what made me laugh in the book? <laughs> You've walked out, seen an ambulance... Yeah, this you is where the ambulance. Do you know over the time they showed me they showed me the um CCTV. I then everything played in my mind. What door did I come out of? Yeah. Now I know what door I come out of. They never showed me walking down that road. Yeah, oh man. I don't know why. Really, really. I don't know why. It must be something in it. Know why? Because I know the people in the pubs. Yeah. And people in the stalls. They they got the CCTV cameras, so yeah. they know what way I went. Oh. And, and there's a couple of witness things that's been said over the time. Yeah. That yeah, I, was, I mean, I was in a conscious then. I must have been. Yeah. I must have been in a bad way. Um, I did see the blue light, and I went banging on the window, um, because that and um, it just drove away in the end. They, they thought you was the other mob. Maybe, or we weren't the first um, call that whoever made the first call for maybe, maybe um, just after they crashed or something. Who knows? Yeah. Um. But it drove away, and that's when I went into. That's what I can remember again, until like seconds later, um, I feel I see more, see more um, flashing lights coming. 
And um, that's when one of them pushed me down and told me to get down on the floor. And that's when and I... You heard the three bangs as well. So that, that's when you heard that. So, yeah. what, what, so tell us about the three bangs. Uh, when the bangs started going, I mean, that's what woke me up again because I must be unconscious. I always remember like, someone saying, get down. And then the, the bangs started happening. And when it's above a market, it's echoing yeah. even more. So it's like banging, but then yeah. you've got a long, long bang, which, I mean, the shooting was for probably about a minute. Yeah. There was 30, 50 bomb, rounds. Bomb, bomb. Yeah. yeah. But there's 50 rounds being... 50? Is that, 50. is that what they unloaded? Yeah. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. to me, it sounded like it was going on for 10 minutes. Yeah. But everything happened so quick. Um, what, they unloaded 50 into them? 50 rounds, yeah. Oh, fucking But hell. also to the, to the um, fake, fake things as well. To the fake vest they were shooting the at. Vest, yeah. yeah, yeah. So no one knew they was who, who, who sus they were fake, boy. Um, it's only when they recognised, realised then when they shot them. And they yeah. never exploded. Because you even had the SAS come on the um it's on the bridge. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, by <laughs> then I was, I was being blue light <laughs> to um, <laughs> I was being blue light. <laughs> yeah. This is where the malt thing are going. I mean, we had we had no police at the time then. Um, all we had was the British Transport Police, I think. Just says there's rampaging through, which three of them got George Crosses. No. Um, you know what? I'm well, still... we'll go into that. Let's, let's just yeah. get... So you're, you're, you're bleeding on the floor, boy, right? Old Bill's got you pinned down on the floor. They ain't got you pinned down. They know no, that. No, no, yeah, I was supposed to come round. There was three, um, three of them, armor sponsored vehicles. They come round, and that's what woke me again. Um, they told me, like, get on the floor. Maybe that's because of the ricochet. That's their training, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Well, they don't um, know who you are, do they, really, until yeah. they know who you are. No, nah, that's right, yeah. Um, but they shot them. I see one of them being shot. Yeah. Um, and they shot all three of them. And it's only then, afterwards, um, that the local police all started coming as well, um, which two of them must be to hospital, the nearest hospital, straight away. Blinding. Thank God. Um, that was St Thomas's because a lot of them went to King's College. Um, I was rushed to St Thomas's because all I remember in the police. But they don't know the story yet, Roy, do they? They don't know. No, no, no all they, all they can tell me is don't touch me All I remember was I keep thinking I got stabbed in the side. That's it. They were telling me don't touch me here, but all I remember as well telling them slow down because every time they went over the bump, they were flying along. Every time they went over the bump. What they what they sent you about your ear, Roy, in the back. When you're trying to touch the kids, your ear. Yeah, the kid said to me, don't touch your ear roll. I said, what's the matter? She goes, he goes, it's nearly coming off. Oh. But I'm, I'm more worried about my side. That's yeah. what I can feel. No, so a lot of this is all the adrenaline that you don't feel yeah. when you're getting stabbed or, yeah. or slashed. I mean, I had slash wounds in my head, my yeah. neck. Um, but all I kept feeling was that, that flushing thing in my body. Yeah, tell us, Roy, what, what, what was the actual damage? What, what did I... I mean, nice and... Tell us what what damage did they do to you, boy? What the stab wounds that? Yeah, well, when they stabbed you, you had eight well, stab, stab wounds. I had two um two chest stabs, uh, no, two stomach stabs, uh, one in the chest. I had um uh, stab wound in my arm where they pulled the knife down. Oh. which um, I think I had stab wound on the other arm. Oh, it switched it. Yeah. But I didn't feel nothing at the time, which yeah. I had a stab wound on my neck, but also they slashed me, me ear. I had two slashes on my head, which they must have come down with a knife. I mean, luckily... And you're on your own in the booze, now. You're fighting the three, these three people, and they're yeah. doing this kind of damage with you, and you're on your own, boy. I'm on my own, and especially my glasses have gone in as well. Which, so you can't um, see nothing as a bonus. I mean, even to this day, I mean, I'm still having... Um, Bit of physio with the um, tendons. I must have got in a few, few um, hits. I must have. No, you must have. I mean, but people, that's people not the point, really, Roy, is it? I mean, I mean, the thing that keeps coming back to me is all these people, which we'll <laughs> touch on a bit later as well. All the ones that are being commended are yeah. the ones that left you roasting. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, let it go on still. And they're still being um, com commended. Um, both fully, I mean, that's still on at the moment. There's not, I've got a lot of good things um, oh, going boy, on. There. Boy, 
Well, you're in the back of the old bill. You're in the back of the police car. You're, you're hitting the bumps. bumps. It's killing you as you're going over yeah. the bumps, and you're going, you're on your way to St Thomas Hospital. Yeah. Oh, look, go on. What, what's going on? I can't remember what entrance it was. It must have been the um, the front entrance where the beginning of the bridge. I mean, obviously, I'm I'm pouring the blood. I'm a, I'm coming in that conscious. They keep telling me, hold on. Um, I think there was a trolley waiting for me. Yeah, I bet there was. There was something waiting for me. So the police, um, they took me in there. And then from there, all I remember, then it must have given me some, um, kept, it must have then given me, started giving me drugs, came in. And yeah. That's all I can really remember. Because yeah. um, it was like a roller coaster. I've never been done to ketamine and all that before. But it was like being on a roller coaster. It was like, I was just in different um, world then. Yeah. I still had surgery, I think, that night. Yeah. Or that morning. Um, when it started patching all the um, cuts up, yeah, and I, I can't knock the NHS for the service they've given me. It's brilliant. Good people at the hospitals. Good people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, good people. Nurses, I mean, all the nurses. They, they, and and it comes across in the book as well, boy. That they was giving you a bit of respect for what you've done as well. I mean, I don't know if they've heard yet what you've done. All you are now is a bloody... No, this is the major incident. I mean, the major incident. I mean, they've probably been used to it because there was one on the Westminster a few months before that. But a Saturday night, um, you, I mean, you don't. They, they're trained for it any time, of, any time, I suppose. Then any time of the day, really. Whether it's middle of the night, whether it's early hours in the morning. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad they kept me alive. They, uh, they patched me up quite well. Yeah. Um, so and... now it's being filtered. Uh, when's the story get filtered in that, that you're 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 having a toe to toe with three of them? When's that start filtering in, boy? Um, well, I um, I was on um, I was in intensive intensive care for a little while, a couple about a day or two. Um, luckily, none of the organs was were, were Damn caught, it. So. Yeah. It um, helps quite a bit. I yeah. mean, I've all, the, I've all the wounds which have been patched up and monitored. Um, and obviously, a couple of days, I, I, did, I won't even, obviously, I must have been asleep or something or whatever. Then on a the Tuesday, um, it come out of the sun. Um, it come in and saw you, didn't he, the geyser? Yeah, yeah, no, but as before that, they put it in the sun, so they must have got the story somewhere. And it had um, fuck you on Millwall, yeah, on the sun, um, and yeah, that's when um, people started telling me then that what I've done and where they've heard it from. I mean, because even my mate who I was with, I mean, he had to run upstairs. He locked himself in the toilet for forty minutes. He wouldn't even let the he, he wouldn't even let the arm he wouldn't even let the arm um, response people in. He's left you roasting as well, mate. Yeah, he said I answered the phone when he phoned me, so I didn't know where I was. He's um, you're in the car, Zay. Yeah, he's the car, oh, Zay. I asked them for a little bit. I've been stabbed. I'm dying. <laughs> oh, dear. And I had one of them little Nokias at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, on that Tuesday, it got the news broke on the paper. Um, I mean, I'm still I'm still recovering. I mean, I'm... Oh. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Um, totally drained and... Everything else um, being monitored. Um, I will, but they put me, then they started putting me in a bright wall, a, 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 um, a wall on their own with another bloke who'd been stabbed in the back. He just got caught in the back and that. Um, and I just keep waiting to go down op operation after operation to patch up. Yeah. Each way, skin, um, the skin people on it. And um, then the Samway's coming to see me. Then obviously the sun the report news. was wormed his way in, and he's coming. To... Well, we had arms. We had our, we, the place was on lockdown for a couple of days because there was a general election on that Thursday. Gotcha. So, do you know where guy, um, Sir Thomas is? You know the green there. That's yeah. been used by all the um, press all over the world because of the. What year was this, Roy? It was two thousand and seventeen. Of oh, seventeen, so yeah. he just got in. Oh, silly bollocks, Johnson and all that. No, it was May at the time. Oh, right. I don't, I don't know if she took over. She wasn't there long. She was, they've had problems over the last... I don't know many years they've had problems, but they keep changing every... Yeah. Maybe she took over from someone else, didn't she? And it's yeah. called a general election. Yeah, Cameron. She took over from Cameron. Right. Yeah, maybe you're right, yeah. May, and then Silly Nuts. 
sort of guy. But anyway, so you're in the hospital, some newspapers come in, no one's advising you to not say nothing here, are no. they? No. So you're as far as you know, you don't come from that media world. You've let a reporter in who's probably earned fucking five, six million pound out of your story yeah. anyway when they've sold all the papers. <laughs> yeah. Give you a Dina. No. Um I mean <clears throat> I mean the sun they've given me some money <clears throat> out of the photos afterwards coming out. Um give me some money for photos coming out. The story was made by someone else. It was made without my like knowledge because I didn't know it. It's just what yeah. They do their reporting, and obviously I've come out as the um, the main person at the time. But he sneaked in, didn't he, the reporter? No, he didn't sneak in, no. No, oh. no, no. Oh. No, no, this, this story was already done. I mean, you can't sneak in. I had, um, I had armour sponsor still there. But you let him in then? The yeah, we, they you asked report, him to come comes, in. Yeah. Because they, they was knocking at my baby's mum's house. Um, obviously, run. yeah. And obviously, then, so obviously she knows what was that just happened because I, I didn't speak to her for a few weeks months before that um so she come up with them then she went on tv am i think yeah a couple days after that yeah um and then they asked me to do something on the phone that like piers morgan phoned me on the phone um still not uh, offering you a tanner no nah, only when i went into the office only when i went into the um studio into, into the studios i went in there one morning i was meant to go down for an operation in the afternoon yeah. So they asked me to come in. I mean, they they um, paid the same thing as an appearance fee. Yeah, 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 yeah. But all I'm saying is, Roy, I mean, after what you've gone through, apart from the nurses and the doctors, everyone else, there ain't a lot of compassion for you, is there at all with these people? No. Or is there? No. Or is there? I don't know. All no. they can do is... I mean, I've, I've, I mean, to this day, I've never said thank you to the two police officers that um, to, to hospital, yeah, yeah. I've knocked to Peckham Police Station where they're based. I mean, that's shut down there. Yeah, um, so that's hard work. But I've yeah. always put, I've always, if I've seen the police, um, any of their start over the, but at the beginning, I always said, can you pass the message on? I appreciate. Thank you very much. What was Obviously. their names, Roy? Do you know their names? I, I've had their names. I've lost their names. I'm going to try and get it again. Yeah, I'd love to put that in the book as well. The two police officers' names, just to, yeah. if it weren't for their quick response. Yeah, it'd be brand I mean, Yeah, I mean, you don't want a policeman when you don't want one. But this time I needed one. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. you're in hospital, so cut to, how long you're in hospital for? It was, was it 12 days, I think I was in there. 12 days, cut to day 10. What's going on on day 10, Roy? About everything, all the fuss, all the everything. Uh, oh, was, coming in, saying... They still want to be paying. We want to look, look, after, we look after your welfare. We want to make yeah. sure that you've got help and you've got counselling and psychotherapy. Is all that happening, Roy? Well, that's, that, that story came out on the fourth day, I think, or third day after the terror attack. On the Saturday, which was just been about a week later, I was allowed downstairs to meet me mates like the coffee and all that. And that's when I realised when people started, um, what, they started seeing me and started giving me cuddles. Oi, oi. Yeah. <laughs> Bit of the old women were like. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was emotional. Yeah, it was lovely. emotional. Get me going now, <laughs> carry on. Yeah, no, of course, you should do, mate. It's yeah. love. It was the love that was shown to you by your own people, mate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that was nice. Yeah. Um, and then, like, 10, 10, 12 days after, they put me in a... Um, because I had nowhere to live, officially. Um the thing that done me. Yeah, this they couldn't, the they couldn't let me leave me. hospital without getting me a place. But what they did, they put me... It was, it was a little room with a shower. They put me above um, a barber's, <laughs> which was um, in Brixton, yeah? Where the... Um, a big store there it was. I can't remember the name of the road. Right opposite Brixton. Tube station. I ain't put bar- in one bedroom, nice little flat or anything. Yes. Yeah, that's the last thing I wanted was the uh, <laughs> above a barber's. That's of course. <laughs> they weren't too bad in the end, but when you edge thinking. That's a liberty, mate. Well, they yeah, done that. Liberty. Might be I, I bet things. they wouldn't have done that to someone who's middle class who was in your position. I bet no. they would have swung them on top of a barber shop in Brixton. No. And at the same time, when I was in the hospital, the Glenfield fire happened. Yeah. And then you hear stories that they've been putting um, 
five star hotel. I know they lost their ass. Exactly, exactly. Um, I know they lost their ass. Um, I did know someone from the council who works in housing, and be careful. Yeah, but he, he said he they couldn't do that. I tell you why, because there was a thing come out just after I come out of hospital, or maybe I was in, or just yeah, just come out come out of hospital. I had a little running with um, a load of students at the Elephant. Now, I, w I won't get on with the babies one at a time, but I still take my dogs, my girls' dogs out. Then um, she had a husky and a boxer, which I just love walking down the Thames with them. I think. And there's one morning, um, yeah, it was big uh, March. I think it was marching about Trump and May or something, or when Trump was coming over. And it's up the Elephant. You've got the big universities up there, printing college, which I went for many years. But they were doing a big march, lad, and everything else. I'm walking back from the, uh, my long walk. Now, this husky is a bit of a... <laughs> it was snap at people. If, yeah, yeah. It's getting louder. People were trying to stroke him. This and yeah, that. Walk away, crowds, walk, walk back right into him. The photographer's trying to take photos of him. I mentioned a few words to the photographer. Um, okay. You can look at it both ways. Whether I'm wrong mentioning what I mentioned. Sorry, boy. One of them decided to sell it to the newspaper. Oh, no. What? The photo? Yeah. Of me, me saying something to the uh, photographer. Right. So the police come and they, they've um, come and see me straight after coming out of hospital. Asked me to attend the police station. No. Yeah. I got nicked for racial. No. Yeah. So but in the end. Yeah. After you've been through all that. Yeah. They've waited for you to come out like a gate arrest and come yeah. and gotcha. Because oh. I was like, does, and then obviously other people then drop out and think, um, like racist, this, racist, that, after a few words. And even to get nicked, even when I see the video, I've got one of the marshals on the video trying to clump me when I've got two dogs on me. <laughs> um, yeah, this is previous before the thing. So this, this is six different. months before. So what we're saying now is that's happened. Yeah. When the terrorist attacks happened, yeah. you've been stabbed all over the gaff. And then you go to hospital, you're in hospital for 12 weeks. <laughs> the photographer who you've half sort of shouted at yeah. has sold the picture. You've come out of hospital after 12 weeks of being stabbed eight times, an old bill of nicture. Yeah. And I've got nick for that. And now, what do you yeah. think about that, Roy? I mean, look. I think it's disgusting, um, especially after... Do you think in the history, when you do something like this, do you think all this sort of stuff should be negated because of this, of what you went through? Because I personally think it should. I personally think it, you know... Well, you people, I don't know where their heads are, mate. I don't know where this fucking establishment's heads You'll are. You'll say six months before that. Why didn't they go to the police then and complain about it? Exactly, exactly. Again, the officer, I guess the officer, look, you can see the uh, marshal there trying to punch me while I've got the dogs. Why haven't you got to sleep, people? Oh, well, we can do. I go, no, don't worry about it. I don't want that person, Nick. I'm not the same as these people. Yeah. It's simple. But um, they got a pound note from the photo anyway as well, yeah. weren't they? Then I went to Neil Coyle's office one day. I was standing outside. Um, Furious, mate. Fucking... Neil Coyle weren't even there. And I, I, just, I just felt angry. I thought... I said to Sarah, I said over to Sarah, I goes, all you look after is these pig eating Muslims yeah. all the time. Okay, yeah. it's, it's wrong saying that over, but. No, but you've been through what you've been, been through, Roy, you know. Yeah. You, um, what, is, that, is that six weeks previous? That was just come out of, just, well, just not long after I come out of hospital. Right. So, I look, at the end of the day, right, you're seeing people. Let's, let's, take, let's take the schism out of all this. Let's take all the. The racism, let's take all this out of this, right? Three people that want to blow up or do whatever they've got to do and cause terror on town on London Bridge stabbed yeah. you eight times, yeah. right? For the calls, screaming what they're screaming as they're stabbing you and all that, and you got the ump with them. I mean, what is I mean, come on, what yeah. what, what you got? Are you, are you not entitled to say to these people where well, you're not being looked after and these people are being looked after? Ain't you entitled to have after after petrol pump with that, really? It's mad because Neil Cole, they got me nicked. I was banned from two years for many... He got summer. you nicked. The Labour, the, the, the yeah. head of Labour of Bermondsey yeah. got you nicked. Yeah. I got a two-year banning order from him. Um, 
Oh, um, no, only Southwark, obviously, has got two-year ban order. So that was that. He, he's actually got nicked over the last year or two for causing the same sort of thing in Parliament with a Chinese bloke. Oh, really? What, race, race, race your Yeah, like, but all he got his, his whip taken away from him. Well, that's, that's good enough, yeah. anyway. So, um, he, he's so all that happened, they've got the banning order from Southwark offices. Um, so that's when I did just go fund me a um, bit of money. No, but why? Right, let's go back. I mean, what are you thinking at this time when all these people are ganging up on you and you've, well, done, and you, you've been through what you've been through? What's going through your nut? Um, I've had enough going from up there. I've been in the papers. The three terrorists died. They're from um, an organisation organiz an which um, are killing people all Among over the place. Terror. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, you can look at the way the world's gone there with the um, state of the councils. We're letting them. No, but what I'm, but what's the, what, what I'm trying to put in now, we're not putting everyone in the same basket. No, right? no, not, no. We're talking about people that make a decision to walk into a crowded building and blow everyone up. Yeah. It's... We're not talking about... Joe Blogg, who's walking down the yeah. street, who's living a peaceful life, who's 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 loving life, who's who's peaceful, who take their stuff. We're talking about now the people that blow people up and the people that kill innocent babies, innocent children, innocent yeah. parents are being looked after more than what you're being looked after. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I right. mean, they're, 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 now, what's wrong with thinking like that? <clears throat> that's what's happening. That's what's happening. But what's wrong with thinking like that? No, but you can't say nothing. And I'm the one who did say did say something, and I'm getting. Pushed I mean, here. let's not get too 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 involved. Let's just make make the points across here, really, because I do I do understand that, like, no, but people is... that do these things, they're even killing their own people because blowing up kids at um, a concert. Right, exactly, mate. But I mean, what, what the a, issue is. Think. Yeah. The issue is, three, three, three people have come through a pub door and stabbed the life out of you. If you yeah. never got in the way of them people, they would have stabbed the life out of every single person that was in that pub. Yeah. Took them every... pain, took them away from their children. So, right, bang. Now you I mean, I'm looking at that saved my own life. I mean, we're talking about scores of people here that I probably saved. They look at that. Yeah. Um, not, by, and... not, not even thinking about your saving them. You're just... Yeah. Like, Oh, was you thinking about the people, or was you thinking you, about? No, you got to think, you, you think yourself first. It's just natural. Yeah, um, I, I mean, I say myself, I got out of there. Um, I got out of there alive. I got out of there something that really I'm walking still. I'm. I can right. Use my arms. right, Roy, you've coming out of hospital. Now they're telling you you're on an ISIS hit list. Yeah, they told me that when. Um, What's going on here, mate. Because of the way I was involved in it, and three of their members have been um, shot, this could have been just someone been saying that, whether it weren't or not. But obviously, it hits your head from thinking, especially if I see so active at the time, we're doing all these so things. Let's just get this straight one more time, Roy. You're not condemning any people that are not involved in this murderous activity. No. That's all I wanted to, that's all I wanted to know. You're not tiring everyone into the same brush. You're not tiring. All you all you all you are tiring in the brush are these people that are running in gas, blowing people up and, and causing absolute yeah. terror. Yeah, but I mean you can say that about when we talked about football earlier, with your mill supporter like yourself, you can't every mill supporter can't be a troublemaker. Yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. Right. and that's the point I'm getting at. I, I don't, I, you know, because people for ammunition, they use this sort of stuff for ammunition. Yeah. You know, I mean, oh, you're a racist, you're this, you're that. No, I'm a geezer who was in a boozer, got stabbed eight times by three terrorists who was prepared to kill yeah. every single person in that pub. What do you want me to say to you about it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And this was an Italian girl I went and met the other day. I mean, whether you could be racist or not, I was out with, well, 
Just off. I mean, racist. No. Uh, uh, what's <laughs> happening to you? Like I said, it's terrorist, mate. It's yeah. terrorist. It doesn't matter that you speak bad about these people that stabbed you eight times and was prepared to take you away from your wife, your daughter, and everyone else who loves you. Yeah. What, you've got to love is... these people? No. Exactly. This is where, I mean... It's this is where girl. Sorry, Roy. The other Dickens started coming along. I had to go probation then to see um, the probation after these Dickens because I think I've got, like, community order and all that. Um, now, to prevent... I had a normal probation officer, but also I had a prevent probation officer coming on it. Um, because of what I've been through, they decided to put me on the prevent programme. They reckoned it was because I said something. Now, I've been classed in, and also because there was probably them two um, marches, which the Football Lads Alliance done, Yeah, I think just after, um, there was a load of like people marched about terrorism, against football lads against terrorism. Yeah, that's nice, mate. Thought I mean, I kept off her because I was still was unwell. Yeah, I was still unwell. I wish, I think, but then to go on the, I moved away after that thing for Brixton. I thought I got this little bit of GoFundMe money. Um, let's go yeah, and look someone, out. someone's, someone's done this off their own back, haven't they, Roy? Yeah, They've gone yeah. right bang. Oh, look, like, this geezer needs a bit of help. Buy him a new pair of glasses. Yeah. Bang, here's a go from me. Out of love, out of respect of what you did and what you've been through, they've done that, haven't they? Yeah. I mean, I wish I'd be only a place. I could have done it right up and lived like everything. But I did. And I moved away from the, the area I love. Caravan. Coast. I mean, just because it was so quiet. Yeah. Get away. Um, bought a caravan. Um, but then that's things I think isolated me. Um, but you can't be blamed for any decision that you're making at this time, Roy, because no. you're mentally sort of uh, wounded. Yeah. You don't get over these sort of things on your own back, mate. You're mentally wounded, mate. Any, any, Anyone who goes through what you went through can't think straight. No, so that's where the problems then I started. Um, I keep going back to probation. Then I had to go and meet the, pre- pre- um, the county hills and police down there prevent in, in Kent. They made themselves um, busy with us, knew where I was. Um, they decided to get some other bloke from an outside company to do these courses with me. He came down from Birmingham. Um, he, he said he used to leave about five o'clock in the morning, come all the way down to the, you know what it's like getting down to yeah. in church or whatever. Yeah. You, you only got, like, it takes ages. But he, he came down, we had about six sessions, and even he said, we started talking about football in the end. Yeah. Um, and he said, these people should be doing more for you like socially than educating you <laughs> about things. I mean, there's even asked, because I, I was hiring cars at the time. They kept asking me every time I changed the car, can I give them, their, give them the number plate? They wanted that. <laughs> and I just... But, that, but, 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 but what I've got out of your book, what this geezer said hmm. is that... Uh, where is it? What's the word to use? Uh, uh, he, he said... He said, you're, you're prime for being recruited. To, yeah, yeah, the, uh, the yeah. So they're keeping their eye on you because they think, because what's happening to you, you're going to get recruited by these people. Well, so many people always contact me, especially like when these big marches going on. I mean, I kept away from everything. I just kept myself yeah. to myself. And yes, I'm in the news, obviously... Then all the other things that come along. Maybe they might have done the far right. People might have been trying to get hold of me. Now, yeah. I never had anyone contact me from the far right or anything like that. Not that you would get involved in that anyway, Roy. No, no. I'll catch away from the marches because I went well. Which um, I met a few people with the elephant. I mean, I met a load of um, I think West Ham, Tottenham, Arsenal fans, Chelsea. They were meeting up to go on a march, and I say hello, thank you for yeah, for your kindness. Yeah. Um, it was just football lads against terrorism. It was just yeah. But of course, they read all these things because my name get connected. Of course. Straight after. It's like everything now. I, mean, um, I had a phone call from the Sun the other day. I don't know why that one was because a bloke was working in. Um, he came out early release. He tried to kill a load of people. Right. He's a manager of um, Asda now in Watford. Okay. Oh. He's been promoted. Right. Um, what do I think of. Um, the they just found out that he was ready to slaughter loads of people years ago. Say no uh, what do I think of the thing? Um, 
I'll just cut, I'll just say I think it's disgusting, but he didn't put my name in in the end anyway. Yeah. But um, that's the thing I've get connected to because of terrorism now. Yeah. I get these calls. And you don't want that round you anyway, do you, Roy? You don't want to be no. you want to be left. I mean, we've got our own views on everything in our own head. Yeah. That, um yeah, we will got our own views. We'll have our own views in my head anyway. Okay, otherwise I could be putting loads of stuff in books that Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean at the end of the day, mate, you've just got a sort of ill, haven't you? You've got a hill. Now, after all this, uh Roy, how's it all going? What 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 is the progression and what has happened? Because in your book you 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 say that you was at a a, 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 a a gathering a happening and that met and that Sadiq Khan was there and you just wanted like a bit of acknowledgement or that was the first I think it might be the first anniversary. Um yeah. Yeah Sadiq Khan, um Jeremy Corbyn, Diane Abbott, I think Theresa May was there. That was at Tudy Street. Um, the bottom of London Bridge. They done um, yeah, yeah they done a big um, first anniversary thing, um, there. Oh, um, yeah, and also um, late Labour, late, late the um, Summit leaders were there, and all that. Now, not one of them acknowledged me at all. Uh, I had to come all the way back from the um, caravan place, make the effort. You got invited to the place, did you, Roy? <clears throat> um, I got invited to the the, the, the chapel. It's only through the police that let me know. That thing, that I mean, obviously, all the all them up front <coughs> taking all the. Uh... You need a pump. No, no, I'm right. Just, just about shut the windows. Probably out of it. Yeah. Um, but no, not one of the knowledge. But I had a couple of good points with your normal people. Yeah. There's one bloke there. He chat me. He goes, "Yeah, have a drink on me. Fifty pounds." Yeah, that was a sweet and, um, in the book. That was my I didn't, yeah, old boy. I didn't want that. Yeah, I mean, it happens a few times. It's happened a few times with football. Oh. Um, I don't want it. <laughs> um, but they deserve, you know what I mean? These people, yeah, they've probably got more money and like, that's a thank you for what you did, which I appreciate. I know, why aren't they acknowledging you, Roy? Why? 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 why is this, is this because there's of something you? there that's not right because, um, I mean, I've known a couple of people who lived on my estate in the past. Well, okay, but you know, and they've actually been now. I know they're firearms people in yeah. the police, as like you for the other people. I've even tried to contact them. They can't contact me because they said I flagged up with something. Um, you know what it is, boy. Another thing that made me absolutely fucking furious re reading in your book. You was down the caravan. Now you don't want to go to sleep for obvious reasons. Yeah. Because you're having these dreams, you're having these nightmares, you're having all sorts of things. Who would want to go? It's like a Freddy Krueger turnout, really, isn't it? You go okay. to sleep and these things come up, yeah. So to save you going to sleep and the state of your mind at that time, you used to use a bit of amphetamine to yeah, stay awake. Yeah, yeah. So I just found it was the best way at the time. At that moment, it's an horrible stuff. I can't stand it. Yeah. But at the time, it's cheaper than the... To awake. Yeah, it's cheaper than the other stuff. Now, the, old Bill's knocked on your caravan door. It's only it after... Um, I was just like smashing things up one night. I just got the ump. In your, in mean, your caravan? Yeah. I mean, I've... Had enough uh, of I, it. Yeah, I, was, I must have smashed about 10 or 20 tellies over the last 5, 10 years. Um, after that terror attack. Did that then? Because you're not. Just got the ump. I don't know why I phoned the phone at the telly. I just... Yeah. Got I the mean, ump. I wish, I wish I'd never had done both the trouble, but... It's, it's, it's that stuff that, that soldiers come back from war and they do all yeah. the... Uh, there's a night PSD. It's, it's all this trauma and everything. You, you can't be blamed for things like that, Roy. It's just trauma. Going back, after the, going back after the attack, they set these things up after a major incident. So you get help first. Yes. Yeah? Now, I've gone to get help at the Morsley. Um, they diagnosed me with complex post-traumatic stress disorder. Yes, yeah. Okay, no follow-up. Then I moved to Kent. Um, even with the prevent people, I tried to get help down there. Another assessment, complex post-traumatic stress disorder. 
It yeah. was only about eighteen months ago, two eighteen months ago, two years ago, that I actually got help when I was in a B and B over in Paddington that Westminster Council um, started doing the talking therapy for me. Yeah. And the bloke actually took me to the um bone market again. And we, we kept going through things back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. I I've been helped, but I think before that I started doing things myself, like going for long walks. Yeah. Trying to, I mean, my head was... But it still ain't of... enough, Roy. You can't no. get yourself out. You need professional help in that. You probably still do now, Roy, to tell you the truth, to get the yeah. deep done. And they've just cast you aside, mate. But my point is, all the other people that was affected in there, they're getting all the proper yeah, stuff. Yeah. They're getting all the... Now, the reason I wanted to bring that... Uh... That that little bit of uh, sulfate up, yeah, is because now you're claiming for. Let me read. Oh, let me get this book a second, right? Right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to read something. Look from Roy's book here. It says, "Look, the criminal injuries scheme is government funded and was created." to compensate victims of serious crime in Great Britain. Whilst the scheme acknowledges that no amount of compensation could make up for the harm and suffering caused to victims of serious crime, it was an acknowledgement of the harm done and an important gesture, uh, gesture of public sympathy. Roy was denied compensation despite damaging his arm and being repeatedly stabbed and slashed. The inquest was shown footage of Roy being savagely stabbed in the stomach and advised that Roy spent 12 days in hospital where he received 80 stitches to his head, his ear, his neck, his arms and his hands. The authority rules dictate that victims of crime cannot claim if they have a criminal conviction, right? Now, what was the main criminal conviction that that was, boy? That was a bit of sulfate, wasn't it? Yeah, because of um, you got a two year, you got a two year thing to put um your compensation claim in. Now, when it was being being getting worse. Um, I kept forgetting about putting the claim in. Yeah, at cool. the time. I, I kept getting myself in trouble. Cool. Plus, me and there. I yeah. was just like all over the place. Yeah. Now, when I put the claim in on the, just before the um, second anniversary, um, I was under probation, right? Kind of community order. Now, when you're under probation, it's called unspent conviction. Yes. Now, the unspent conviction has gone on to the Supreme Court. Yeah. And they lost the uh, case there where. You can't get nothing unless you if you've got unspent conviction. Now, if I had criminal conviction, but not on unspent, unspent. I would have been reduced. Yeah. It would have been reduced. Because I've got unspent convictions, it's a turn down. I'm still trying. I threw it off to the um Alex Chalk a little while ago. Um he's the new justice whatever yeah, MP. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, he's probably on someone else. They've come back with the unspent conviction thing again. All I want to do is go into the appeal judges and put my case forward. Yeah. I mean, there's so many things there people are looking back but on. Is anyone helping you with all this, Roy? Is anyone putting it all together, your case together? Like MPs, like people? This is where, this is where I needed um, Harry Armand. I've, I've voted for MPs. I've, I've, I've voted for Theresa May, Pretty Patel. They've, we've all got to go through Harry Armand, which is my local MP now. They've just got guarantee of all. They've just got pardons. So it is possible to pardon. Yeah, but you don't need no pardoning, mate. All you no. need is look, yeah. uh, there's people that have that have been absolutely bonkers in their nut, committed the worst crimes that you can ever ever imagine, and they're getting helped. So why yeah. ain't people helping you, Roy? Why ain't people writing? Hundreds and thousands of people writing letters to Harriet Harman saying, why are you ignoring Roy Lana? Why? Yeah. Why are people not doing that? So I suggest you get her email address, people, and you drop her a line, you know? Because this I mean, is... Call, and I know I'll, you're I'll coming call. across 
a little bit angry here and all that on this yeah. podcast, right? We're, we're coming across a little, and it takes you to places where you where you don't want to go. Not you, Roy. I mean, people yeah. don't want yeah. these places to go. But once passion and once truth is sort of involved in this, oh, these truth. things go somewhere, you know? Yeah. So there's no yeah. truth happening with Roy. They're dismissing yeah. him, right? Even if it was, even if he even if he jumped in front of saving people or not saving people or, or whatever, the post-traumatic stress that this man's going through warrants a bit of help. So come and help him, for fuck's sake. Sorry. I mean, um, I say we're, we're still getting there. We're still trying. I mean, I mean, I've just the best one news bit I heard last May was. Um, I've finally been offered a bravery award with the Silver Humane Society. Um, who, 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 who's the company that's offered you the reward? Um, Royal, the Royal Humane Society. Right. Okay. It was. It was. It was personally. Um, personally. Um, Maybe one of them can get in touch with Aaron oh, Armand for you. Well, right. well, this is um, Princess Alexander, who's the Queen's cousin. Well, let's get her to drop fucking area arm and the letter. Oh, dude, when I get the ball, you come with me. You can have, we can yeah, both I'll have a little I'll come with you, mate. I'll come with you, mate. I'll be your brief. I can, we no, can both have a little chat over. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's adding insult to injury again, boy. Yeah. Palm him off with a with an award. He'll be happy with that. I'm going to be approved, but then I'll get let down by your local. <laughs> and then the local people. So you've got all these people, princesses and all that, delivering your awards. And people like Aria Armand. Yeah. Who don't get a lot of, you know, who's being paid by us people who are paying taxes and all I mean, that. Was, won't help someone who needs help. The funniest was when Neil Cole, um, when I was looking for places, I said I had nowhere to live. Because he's from Luton. He goes, I've got some contacts in Luton. I might be able to get you a place there if you want. I thought, do I want to go to Luton? Luton in the well, do you want to go to Luton? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're just not in the real world, these people. Yeah, no, they're not, Roy. I think you've got to get some help here, mate. You know, I mean, you've been struck, you've been bumping along, and you're struggling along. And you've got to look at yourself. You've got to do that. But what people don't realise that the mind, once, once, that, you, oh, shit, yeah. you think you're all right. You know, you see people getting up of the morning, taking their kids to school. You think, oh, I'm lovely, lovely person, cooking their kids dinner. No one knows what's going on inside. Uh, I mean, I'm, a, I'm quite a strong person. And I think, yeah. um, I mean, I can't understand. I mean, not, that's not one one bit thought in my mind about suicide and things like that. Um, I'm, I'm a bit strong. But do you know what? You can see how it happens, though, Roy, can't you? I was probably going that way. And thank goodness I've gone past that. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, I got, a, I got rescued one eye. Um, Bully XL here. Someone gave me about a year or so ago, yeah? They didn't want it. They used it for breeding. That's probably the best therapy I've had. Yeah, well, lovely, long, mate. Lovely. Kind of long box. Yeah. Um, now, what would you, if you could, if you could sort of sit down and talk to these people, Roy, what would you say to them, all these people in the establishment that are blanking you now? I mean, sensibly, sort of, intelligently, what would you say to them? I mean... Help me, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, it's not just about help me. It's that you should have people there that can explain to you one to one how you've let people down poor. It's not just about my case. It happens in every lot of cases where it's too late afterwards. Yeah, they all put the blame on each other. And is it uh, now, now, Roy, the, the 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 point I'm trying to make. Do you think they will treat middle class people the same way as they're treating you? Really. I don't know. You, you're around so because watching that thing the other day on the other London Bridge thing. I don't know if you see it or not. I don't a, watch them, Roy. It, it, it yeah. gets, it, it gets. There was a thing there the other day. Yeah, these are um, a couple of um, Cambridge students. Yeah, probably middle class. I think. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, the ones that. Yeah, yeah I don't yeah. know. They go into prisons that. and like get people to change. Yeah. Now some do, some don't. I mean, in prisons, you just get out your thing, just get out of the cell. Yeah. And you can always con these people anyway. Yeah. Because they, they love everybody that just they just want help. And then obviously they invite a terrorist that end up stabbing them. <laughs> In <laughs> Which the didn't make sense. But In that the was put on, that was put on thingy and um and obviously then people who helped who um 
Charles the bloke. I mean, they've all got their gallantry awards already. Yeah. So they've all just the families are probably getting out from the establishment. Yeah. Uh, Cancelling yeah. and yeah. getting all this. But yeah. poor old Roy, because he's had yeah. a little bit of sort of yeah. got got chored with a bit of adults. Yeah, finally got me cancel place um year and a half ago. It's um, not material though, Roy, is it? It's not no. about being material, is it? It's about getting your head right, mate, isn't it? It's about um, stepping into the future with a clear head and just the elastic band un un uncoiled, you know? Yeah, and they've been back over here. I mean, I'm not getting the help. I'm still on the waiting list to get I still need the help. I mean, I'm still gonna need it. Do. You're still gonna go backwards sometimes. Um I mean, I'm still waiting on the people now to get back to us, even if I just go and speak to them or someone there I know that I can speak to. Yeah. I mean, luckily, luckily I've got no good doctors around the corner, which uh, you don't really get many of them no more, which no. Um, is quite helpful. Yeah. Um, so that's quite good. Um, football's hard for me now because everyone wants to talk. Of course it is, mate. Of course. I mean, course. instead of talking to your own people, everyone wants to come up and talk to you about the terror attack, which is still like, it's still big business. Last thing I want to do is have a selfie with someone and I've got no teeth. <laughs> exactly. Oh. <laughs> and if you don't have the selfie, yeah. they, 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 they call you, see, who do you think you are, sort of yeah. thing? And yeah, they, yeah. I and you think, mate, she's not company more. I mean, it's been well, a, I, I, it's I would, like, I would yes, like to win this interview, right? I would like to, uh, first of all, I, I'd like to thank you for being so open. And so it's only something that two people that, that, that come from the same sort of plot and have, have had the same sort of yeah. lives. Like, I mean, we've been trying to get this on for a couple of months now, and it like to finally to done. Talk each other, really, why? And I mean, you know, I'm not, I, I, I'm not in that, in that, uh, in that in that sort of right-wing boat at all. To tell you the truth, I'm sort of more left-wing than I am right-wing, although yeah. I wouldn't vote for Labour, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, with these people sort of involved in it no more. But, you know, people have got to totally, totally understand you and not listen to these cockroaches in the Sun newspaper yeah. and these cockroaches in the right-wing press that want to make dough off you and want to make your situation worse than what it is. Mm. We need someone out there to help you, Roy. I mean, even, yeah, I'd love that. I mean, even if people write to the honours list and nominate me as well, because there's a nomination there for me. Right. You need Aria Arman to take you serious. She's the main one, yeah. Take you serious. You need people to drop emails onto her machine saying, why aren't you speaking to him? Yeah, and I'm going to write off to her again every... Maybe this, maybe this week, just to see how many responses I get. Maybe a letter send to her. Right, send her this fucking podcast. Right? <laughs> send her this podcast. Uh, maybe send letters to Parliament to her, just to see how many um, responses come back. And then maybe I'll send them to you and just see what... Yeah, we'll get them out there, Roy. Yeah. I mean, come yeah, yeah. on, mate. We've got to get you a bit of help here, mate. I mean, all, 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 all the glory and all the ego and all the stuff aside... At the end of the day, mate, and I've seen it in people, I've seen it in people close to me. If your nut doesn't get healed, mate, the worst is to come. Yeah, yeah. The worst yeah. is to come. Until you get free of that, until you release that and surrender to it. And just... I mean, by the summers here, it's quite good because it's light. Um, and it's the summers here, I like the thing. Once the darkness nights come and the low, and the short nights, um, it seems to hit me more because you're thinking more, you're indoors more. And it's you so, put that on your nut as well, yeah. Roy, because in your book, when you said you're on their hit list, an ISIS hit list, so yeah. that yeah. must be at the back of your mind at all yeah. times as well. Yeah. You know, times when I've got go past the mosque and things like that, or if I see a group of um, ones with yeah. beards. Yeah. Um, okay, you eventually... You do get help, like it does release the, that sort of motion on it yeah. over time. But there's also that time where you can just click and go backwards. Exactly, mate. Of course it like, is, boy. Of course it is. This is why you need help because at the moment you're yeah. just a fucking time bomb, really, and you're ready. You're holding it down. You're holding it down yourself. You're not getting no proper help. It's all mm. done inside you. 
you and it's dangerous the other it's know. dangerous the other way around as well where I've been in situations where I've, I've been clamped from behind. Yeah. Um I was walking really? like Yeah. Um but they run off, they clamp me, run not run off down the road. Um but there's also that time where something can happen and I can just may can just trigger another way. Let's hope it never does. Let's yeah. hope I'm on the right, right recovery, but yeah, you know that then you you, yeah, go, you, you ain't know that. right. You ain't on the right recovery, mate. All you're all you're doing is a superficial recovery because you're not getting no professional help. Yeah. yeah. You need professional help. People that know about people that go through these sort of traumas. Yeah. Even if someone in the army take you on board and sit you down, the psychotherapist yeah. and all that, and, and work through it with you. Because yeah. at the moment, Roy, no one likes to admit that they're going through tough times and they're going through hard times yeah. inside their nut. But I know, as a fucking intelligent human being, yeah. an incident like that, you don't recover from on your own. Yeah, you don't really want to keep lying about it and push it more, but you might have to. To get the bloody help. Yeah, no, absolutely, boy. You I know, mean, even if you're an alcoholic, even if you're a drug addict, you go to NA, you go to AA, the first thing they say to you is, you've got to admit that that you've got this problem, right? And the second yeah. thing they say to you is, you've got no control of this, so you've got to hand this over to a higher power. And I think more of us, if I said I'm suicidal, they'd probably help me more quicker. You know, oh, like, it, mate. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Then you look back on it and think it'll go to your record. See, but you don't have to do it. You don't have to pull pull little scams to do that, Roy. What? Well, you've got I a mean, genuine case as a geezer who's in a boozer, whistling, having a light out, and then the next, uh, the next five minutes, you, you've been stabbed eight times. I've only just had my license come back a year ago. Um, they took my license away for three years. What, your driving license? Yeah, it says uh, I was an alcoholic because they read something uh, for third party records. They, they went for everything. Well, yeah. to tell you the truth, boy, you know, all testament to you because there's a lot I mean, of people will go straight <laughs> into the show, but mate, they'll be straight on the booze, mate. Yeah, I've never been, I've never been done for drink driving. I've never, like, I don't drink no more, I don't drink indoors, but it's the way they read something in my um, old yeah. records yeah. where I'm actually we just talking about where I said, um, yeah, I'm depressed. I'm getting drinking more, yeah. or something. And then they're, then they're saying, I've got to fill up. Yeah, and they took my license away for years. I had to go through drug and um, blood tests for me, drug and alcohol. I've passed it all. Yeah, cool. Right, I've got it back for last year. It's only yeah, I've just reapplied for it again. Um, let's see, let's see if it comes back. Yeah, but it's all these old things where it's all connected to that terror attack where you've been picked on, that like, sort of thing. And it's. That plays, that plays again when you had anything else. I'll just keep that in trouble now and hopefully... Hopefully you get some help, boy. Hopefully, yeah. these, you know, these people will see sense, these people in power and these people... Because you'll knit all the awards for some... For just just sit in front of the judges. Just just give me... Treat me like a human being, you know what I mean? Like you would yeah. treat every other human being in my situation... That's all I want, to be treated like that human being, but have respect from people who's supposed to be helping me, who are being paid to help me, and they're just wanking, they're just writing me off, go and get a solicitor, go and get this, go and get that, instead of being straight round your door, how can I help you? I mean, I'm trying to read through things as well, where I know like some everything's different, but I'm trying to read through things, see if there's any loopholes, any things like that where I can go for uh, mine's in the right place now, like to fight it without shouting me it off. Yeah. And being angry, because otherwise they, they could just push you away. Then yeah, mate. Don't yeah, get angry mate. and yeah, we'll get some on it. Um so hopefully I'm gonna keep fighting for that and we'll get there. And hopefully, like I say, thanks for you shouting out to anyone and if anyone yeah, does. I'm with you hundred percent and I wish you all the best of luck. I'm gonna end this now because I don't want it to go on too long because people might get the zig once it goes over a certain amount of time and it loses its thing. So what I'm gonna say, Roy, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure speaking to you as well. So open and talking about the things that you've spoken about, and I really, really do uh, do hope that these yeah. people, you know, stop throwing little bits of brass at you. And get you some proper help, mate. You see, you need to be compensated. 
you need to go what you've been through you need to you need compensation that's totally totally relevant to that experience that you've been through you need a nice peaceful place you need a place to live you need a few quid so you can get your nut together and get it a piece so you can decide what you want to do in the future yeah. and i'm really i'm not a god person i don't do all that god shit and all that but if yeah. there was a god mate i i would ask him not yeah that's too short to help him mate. yeah i mean that's too short and by the way even short with it and also mate if every single person that looks at this podcast and who feels it I, i've got a bit angry through this podcast and all that i don't use i'm not usually like that but your case yeah. really really done me up because you know, I, I really relate to, to to what you're going through and all that. So if every single person that looks at this podcast writes, what's her email at Harriet Armand? Do you know her uh, email? Harriet Armand at, at, um, nah, at Parliament, I think. Get, get it, but oh. have you got it to hand? No, I don't think I have a gift for you. Well, anyway, I'll put it on this. I'll put it on the... Uh, yeah. Description why get it over to me, and if everyone, yeah, I'll get it over to you straight away. Yeah, if everyone who watches this and is and, and, and understands this, like I said, try and look through the anger of what oh, I'm yeah. I'm the perpetrator of anger, yeah. anger anger through this through this interview. It's me that's the one who's been angry and all that. Yeah. You know? So if you can see through that and you can actually understand. What's been going on and what's going on at the moment in his head and who he's trying to see and who he's trying to get. Please write Aria Armand an email uh, and tell her it's a liberty what she's doing by ignoring him. Yeah. I mean, if you do, I, you do, and we bless you for that. And if you don't, I appreciate it. you know, let's get it going, mate. Let's help I this it. up. Let's help this it, mate, up, mate. Eight times stabbed in a fucking terrorist attack. Yeah. And they're treating him like a like a like a piece of shit. You having a laugh, mate? Here's your Tories. There's all your Labour Party. There's all your political parties that you want it, that they want you to vote for. You know, you're all like Roy. They yeah. don't give a granny, mate. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, I appreciate you having me today. Yeah, Roy, it's been an absolute pleasure. And if anyone um, wants to subscribe to, to my channel, the YouTube, yeah, yeah, Webber, uh, YouTube channel, please subscribe because we've got a couple of more little interviews. I'm trying yeah. to get Daniela to do one at the moment as well. So maybe right. we'll get Daniela, we'll get some interesting people on there, people that have been against the, 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 the uh, convention. Yeah. So... Roy, thank you, and uh, yeah. I wish you a lot of luck with this, mate. Yeah, we'll keep in touch, definitely. Yeah, Roy, let's get it. Let's get a little campaign going, mate. I know you've yeah. had it all and all that, but let's just see what. I'm, I'm not saying we can do anything or anything, yeah. but Aria Arman, you need to get in touch, right? And people, honestly, whether you do or not, you need to write Aria Arman an email. And, and tell her how disgusting her behaviour is towards this man yeah. who deserves his head being helped out. I yeah, mean, definitely. please. But definitely. anyway, thank you for the, for the podcast and no I'll problem. let you know when we tune in the next time. And um, if ever there wanted, um, anyone to play me... There you go. Will it be you? What, me? Play the you line around the bridge? I, I ain't know. open up, Roy. You never know, the film might come out one day. I ain't brave enough, mate. I ain't brave enough to play the part, mate. I'll be like the, I'll be like your mate in the car seat. <laughs> oh, yeah, are you all right? Don't make me laugh, but no teeth. How'd you end up I have all that? But lovely, boy. See you Thank soon, you yeah. Love, brother.